Since ancient times, Japan's indigenous Ainu people have nurtured their own distinctive language and culture. But like many such peoples around the world, they're now struggling to preserve their traditions. Our last stop in Hokkaido is perhaps also best representative of the true soul of what was once a separate island nation from Japan. So what's the population of Ainu? Scholars say it's not clear. There is a once in seven year survey conducted by the Ainu Association. A single skeleton in a locked vault just destroyed a century of national pride. In 2019, geneticists finally sequenced remains that had been off limits for 40 years. The results were a total bombshell. The DNA belongs to the Ainu, a group with thick beards and deep set eyes who look nothing like the typical Japanese face. Despite piecemeal attempts to improve their situation, such as an Ainu-specific 1974 welfare program, Ainu living standards have lagged behind those of other Japanese. This discovery proves that the first people of Japan were systematically erased and pushed to the edges of the map. It is a mystery involving ancient migrations and a modern-day awakening that is changing everything we thought we knew. The story of Japan's true roots starts right here, ancient markers found at last. Deep beneath the University of Tokyo, in a research wing that feels more like a prison than a lab, a secret was waiting to be found. Dr. Hiroshi Tanaka sat in front of a glowing computer screen, his hands shaking as the data loaded. He was looking at the DNA results of a skeleton that was 3,800 years old. For nearly 40 years, the Japanese government had banned anyone from testing these remains. They told the public they were just being respectful to sacred sites, but people in the science world whispered about a different motive. They believed the government was terrified of what the DNA would say. If the results went public, they would fracture the very idea of what it means to be Japanese. When the sequencing finally finished, Tanaka felt like the air had been kicked out of his lungs. The genetic markers on his screen did not match the people living in Tokyo or Osaka today. They belonged to a group of people who, according to the official history books, should not have been the original masters of the land. These codes were foreign to everything he had studied, yet they were ancient and persistent. In that moment, he realized his discovery would do more than just end his career. It would force an entire nation to look at a truth that had been buried under centuries of silence. The skeleton was from the Jomon period, a time long before the famous samurai, or the emperors we know today. Most people are taught that the Jomon people simply evolved into modern Japanese people. But here is the catch. The DNA proved that the Jomon are actually the direct ancestors of the Ainu, a group that has been treated like outsiders for a long time. This means the people who were pushed to the cold northern corners of the country were actually the first ones there. For a long time, the government pushed a narrative of a single pure race. But the crazy part is that these bones tell a story of replacement and erasure. Tanaka knew that if he shared this, it would be like dropping a bomb on a hundred years of national identity. The markers he saw showed that the Ainu were a foundational group, a unique branch of the human family tree that had been living on the islands for 30,000 years. This was not just a small detail or a minor mistake in a book. This was proof of a massive cover-up involving the very origins of a nation. As he scrolled through the data, he saw markers that are barely found anywhere else in the world today. It was like looking at a genetic time capsule that had been locked away for four millennia. He had to decide if he would keep the secret or let the truth break through the walls of the laboratory but the secrets in that lab were just the tip of the iceberg. Secret notes Japan tried to steal. To really understand why these DNA results are such a big deal, we have to go back to the year 1865. A British explorer named Thomas Wright Blackiston was traveling across the northern part of Japan. He had already spent time in big cities like Tokyo and Kyoto, where he saw people who looked like what we expect today. They were usually shorter, with smooth skin and straight hair. But when he reached the northern island of Hokkaido, he stopped dead in his tracks. He was not looking at the Japanese people he had seen in the south. Standing before him were men with massive wavy beards and thick hair covering their arms. They had deep-set eyes and strong frames that reminded him more of people from Europe than from East Asia. The women had blue tattoos around their mouths that looked like smiles, a symbol of their rank in history. Blackiston was totally confused. He wrote in his diary that these people looked more like his own countrymen than the people in the capital. He spent weeks drawing sketches and taking measurements of their homes and tools. 
These journals were filled with details about a culture that was completely different from the rest of Japan. The Ainu did not grow rice. They hunted bears and fished for salmon. They believed that every tree, river, and animal had a spirit inside it. But as Japan started to modernize, these notes became dangerous. The new government wanted to show the world that Japan was one unified nation with one type of person. They did not want anyone to know about a group of people who looked and lived so differently. There are stories that officials tried to take Blackiston's notes and photos to hide them from the world. They wanted to erase the Ainu from the map before anyone else could see them. Hands down, this was one of the first times the world almost learned the truth, but it was quickly pushed under the rug. Blackiston's descriptions of the Ainu were so detailed that they threatened the official story. He saw that the Ainu were the true owners of the North, and they had been there for a very long time. For the next hundred years, the government did everything it could to make sure the Ainu disappeared. They banned their language and forced them to take Japanese names. They even made it illegal for women to get their traditional tattoos. The goal was to make everyone look and act exactly the same so that the Ainu would just become a memory. But you cannot erase blood, and you cannot hide the truth forever. Even with the notes hidden, the physical proof could not be ignored. Replacement without a war. The real mystery is how the original people of Japan were pushed to the edges in the first place. About 2,300 years ago, a new group of people began to arrive on the islands. They came from the Korean peninsula and brought things that changed everything. They had bronze tools, iron weapons, and a new way of growing food called wet rice farming. Before this, the ancestors of the Ainu lived as hunters and gatherers. They moved with the seasons and lived in balance with the woods and the sea, but rice changed the math of survival. A single acre of rice can feed many more people than an acre of forest can. This new group called the Yayoi started to grow in numbers very fast. They did not come with huge armies to fight a big war. Instead, it was a slow and silent takeover. It was a conquest of birth rates. For every one hunter-gatherer child, the rice farmers could raise 10. Over a few hundred years, the Yayoi population exploded into the millions. The original people were not wiped out by swords. They were simply outnumbered. It is like a slow-motion invasion that never made it into the history books. As the Yayoi moved north, the Ainu ancestors had to make a choice. They could stay and try to live like the farmers, or they could move further into the mountains and the cold north. Most of them moved. By the time the islands were fully settled, the Ainu were only left on the island of Hokkaido. This is where the geography of Japan played a big role. The northern island was too cold for the rice technology of that time, the winters were too long, and the snow was too deep. This cold weather acted like a shield for the Ainu. Because the farmers could not grow their food there, they stopped their advance. For over a thousand years, the Ainu stayed in the north keeping their ancient way of life alive while the rest of Japan changed. When scientists look at the DNA of modern Japanese men, they see the proof of this replacement. More than half of the men carry a genetic marker that comes from those early rice farmers. But in people with Ainu roots, that marker is almost never found. It is like an invisible line was drawn across the country, showing exactly where the new people stopped and the old world remained. Numbers can win a fight, but they cannot erase an ancient legacy. First humans of Japan. When researchers peered into the microscopic architecture of Ainu DNA, they didn't just find different sequences. They found a genetic signature that left the scientific community reeling. This signature is known as haplogroup DM55, and its presence in the Japanese archipelago is one of the greatest anomalies in human history. To understand how strange this is, you have to look at the map of Asia. You will not find this marker in the teeming populations of Beijing, and you will not find it in the villages of Korea. It is effectively extinct across the vast majority of the continent. In fact, the only other places on Earth where this specific lineage survives in significant numbers are the high-altitude plateaus of Tibet and the isolated Andaman Islands in the Indian Ocean. This suggests that the Ainu are not merely a local ethnic group from the north of Japan, they are the survivors of one of the oldest human migrations in history. They represent a ghost lineage of the first Asians. Scientists estimate that this group split from the rest of the human family tree roughly 40,000 years ago. While the ancestors of most modern East Asians were still moving across the interior of the continent, mixing and shifting, the ancestors of the Ainu, the Jomon people, 
had already crossed onto the Japanese islands. At that time, the earth was locked in an ice age. Sea levels were so low that land bridges connected Hokkaido to the Siberian mainland and the southern islands to the Korean peninsula. Japan wasn't an island chain, it was a rugged peninsula on the edge of the world. When the glaciers finally retreated and the oceans rose, the land bridges vanished beneath the waves. The Tuguru Strait became a massive water barrier, and the Ainu were effectively sealed inside a geographical vacuum. For the next 30,000 years, they lived in total isolation. Their DNA became a genetic museum, meticulously preserving a version of the human story that was being overwritten or erased by migrations everywhere else on the planet. They are the living link to the very first Paleolithic pioneers who walked out of Africa and turned east. For millennia, the Ainu thrived by tuning their culture to the rhythm of the islands. They didn't need to adopt the intensive agriculture that was transforming the rest of the world because the forests and seas of Japan provided a bounty that required no improvement. They were the masters of their environment long before the concept of a Japanese state even existed. However, this ancient bloodline was exactly what the modern Japanese government spent over a century trying to ignore. The official narrative was built on the idea of a single ethnic nation, a myth that claimed Japan began with the arrival of rice farming migrants from the mainland, the Yayoi people, about 2,500 years ago. To acknowledge the Ainu was to acknowledge that the Japanese state was built on top of an older, more indigenous civilization. The Ainu were not just a minority, they were the original foundation of the entire country a fact that was politically inconvenient for a nation trying to forge a new, unified identity. The most startling revelation, however, has come from the people living in Japan today who have no idea they are connected to this ancient past. For decades, the government pushed for assimilation, encouraging Ainu families to hide their heritage to avoid discrimination. They wanted the Ainu to disappear into the modern Japanese population. But DNA does not forget. In 2012, a landmark genetic survey conducted by the Japanese Archipelago Human Population Genetics Consortium revealed something that sent shockwaves through the country. The survey found that the Ainu-related Jamon DNA wasn't just limited to a few indigenous communities in Hokkaido, it was diffused throughout the entire Japanese population. On average, modern Japanese people carry about 10% to 15% Jamon ancestry. If your own ancestors were not who you thought, would you want to know? The truth is coming out and we cannot look away. Tell us what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe for more hidden history.